Since we're living in an era dominated by sequels, reboots, spin-offs, reboot quills, reimaginings, and a bunch more of the buzzwords Hollywood uses to sell us things we already like, audiences tend to get a little bit fatigued with it all. However, prequels might be the most maligned of the bunch, since few franchises benefit from exploring the past. I mean, does The Thing become any better because the prequel showed how that axe got stuck on the wall, or does Wolverine become more of a badass because his memory got wiped by an adamantium bullet? No, it doesn't. Some things are better left unsaid. However, just because most prequels are made solely to milk more pennies from a franchise, that doesn't mean they all suck. In fact, a few prequels have actually tried to expand on the original films, presenting fresh twists on old characters and showing a new angle on events we know like the back of our hand. Of course, it's still debatable if these films needed to exist at all, but at least these surprises go some way towards justifying their existence. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 best reveals in movie prequels. Number 10, Order 66, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. We knew major stuff was going to go down in Star Wars Episode 3, since it had so much ground to cover to connect the prequel trilogy to the original. We had to see Anakin become Darth Vader, the rise of the Emperor, the birth of Luke and Leia, and of course the fall of the Jedi, all in one movie, and that's no small order. Likewise, for movies aimed at kids, there's no shortage of darkness in the Star Wars series, but the Order 66 scene could be one of the bleakest in the whole franchise. Watching the Noble Jedi Order get wholesale slaughtered is rough to watch even now, with most of the unsuspecting warriors getting shot in the back and ambushed. However, the harshest moment is when the younglings, seriously George, could you not think of a better term, run to Anakin for help. And then, of course, he just activates his lightsaber. In a prequel trilogy full of contrived nonsense, the Order 66 scene manages to be a genuine shocker for its brutality, and more than delivers on explaining why the Jedi are all but a myth by a new hope. Number 9. Kazan's origin story, Cube Zero. If you thought that Cube didn't need a prequel and stood fine on its own, prepare to be proven, well, totally correct. The original was a tense low budget gem with a great concept, and part of what made it work was that no one knew what the Cube was. The following movies were pale imitations of that first one, with Cube Zero providing unnecessary background info on everything about the mythology. Predictably, it's the government up to no good that causes the offence, but Zero does manage to pull a genuine surprise in its last moments. In the original movie, there was a character with disabilities named Kazan, who was mysteriously able to survive on his own within the booby trap filled cube. He's the only survivor of the film, in fact, that we never find out where he came from. Cube Zero reveals that his real name was Eric, and he was originally an observer of test subjects within the cube. When he helps some escape though, his punishment is getting lobotomized by his boss and then tossed into the cube with the next test group. Number 8. Magneto is responsible for Charles' paralysis. X-Men First Class. The continuity of the X-Men series is a bit like a box of Christmas lights. Hopelessly tangled and not worth the effort it takes to sort it out. First Class was supposed to be something of a fresh start for the series, after The Last Stand and X-Men Origins made a total mess of things. This prequel told the story of how Professor X met Magneto. There's some crap about teaching a gang of lame new mutants too, but this is the main focus. The friendship between the two, their conflicting ideologies fuel the story, and there's something inevitable about their eventual split. The real heartbreak, though, is how it happens. After avenging his parents by murdering the evil Sebastian Shaw, Magneto fully embraces his dark side. Moira McTaggart tries to shoot him to prevent this, but he deflects one of her bullets right into Charles's spine. Their relationship was already tragic, but realising it was Magneto who accidentally paralysed his best friend makes it positively Shakespearean. They still do seem to be kinda mates though, even when Magneto attempts the occasional genocide. I mean, not everyone's perfect, are they? Number 7. Beanie was an undercover FBI agent. Smoke and Aces 2 Assassin's Ball. The world did not need a follow up to Smoke and Aces, and it needed a prequel even less. Despite the title, Jeremy Piven's Aces and most of the original cast are MIA, with the movie following another FBI witness taken to a secure location and a freak show of assassins turning up. It's noticeably lower budget than the original, with Vinnie Jones and Ernie Hudson being considered the star names. It's not without its merits though, and for those paying attention, it does reveal one interesting nugget about the original. In that movie, Aces has a bodyguard named Beanie who procures him all sorts of illegal things, and is eventually killed when things go south. 
Assassin's Ball reveals Beanie was actually an undercover FBI agent who discusses his upcoming assignment with the hero. It's a small link, but at least some effort was made to tie the movies together. Number 6. The Origin of Santanico Pandemonium From Dust Till Dawn 3, The Hangman's Daughter There wasn't much hope for From Dust Till Dawn 3 after the second film, which was a tacky straight-to-DVD mess. Surprisingly though, this prequel actually did have some merit by slowly revealing the history of one of the most important characters in the series. The story follows some outlaws while they take shelter with a gang of sex workers, alongside the kidnapped daughter of the local hangman. When he turns up to rescue her, things get bloody, and they get even bloodier when they all realise the inn is a vampire nest. The survivors band together to, well, survive, until it's revealed that the daughter is half vampire herself, and she'll eventually become Santanico Pandemonium from the first movie. The hangman's daughter is smart in how it doles this information out. It doesn't appear to have any direct ties to the other movies besides the vampires at first, only for everything to slot into place by the end. It's not a patch in the Tarantino scripted original, but it gets points for at least trying. Number 5. The Engineers Created Human Life Prometheus. The space jockey was one of the big mysteries in the Alien franchise, and Ridley Scott had said for years that if he ever returned, he would explore their origins. There were also numerous fan theories about the jockey himself, and speculation over whether his race created the aliens as a weapon. Their questions were sort of answered by Prometheus, which revealed that the jockey is from a group of beings known as the Engineers. They were indeed responsible for the creation of the alien, but even more shockingly, they also created the human race as well. Their hatred for humanity drives part of the plot since the parents of the human race are very disappointed with how they turned out. I mean, they probably just took one look at the YouTube comment section and then came to their conclusion. This revelation expands on the series mythology as a whole, showing that the alien was just a small part of it and that, in a cosmic sense, we are too. Number 4. The leads die in the plane crash from the original. Final Destination 5 Final Destination 5 has no business being as good as it is. It's the fifth entry in a franchise that ran out of steam during part 3, but thanks to a playful script and great set pieces, it's easily one of the best. The thing with these movies, of course, is that all of the characters are basically doomed from the start, so it's no surprise that the heroes of part 5 don't make it out alive either. It's how they meet their doom that's clever though, with the ending revealing it was a prequel all along. The two lovers board a plane only to see the cast of the the original movie being thrown off, and shortly after takeoff, the aircraft explodes in mid-air. It is a bleak twist, though the movie's twisted sense of humour does keep it from being too grim. Still, until this moment you had no idea that it was even a prequel, but once you saw that flight number, oh boy, you knew what was coming next. Number 3. Han was killed by Shaw's brother. Fast and Furious 6. For a series of very dumb but very fun movies, the Fast and Furious timeline sure is complex. Parts 4 through 6 are set before the events of the third movie, Tokyo Drift, where fan favourite character Han is killed in a crash. But the director liked the character so much he decided to keep him on, no matter how much it actually fudged the timeline. And that's for the best as well, Han absolutely slaps. Fate finally caught up with him in Fast 6 though, which reveals that Owen Shaw's big brother Deckard is the one driving the car that kills him. This revenge killing is a retcon of the highest order, yes, but it does a neat job of tying the loose ends of the series back together. It also helped bring Tokyo Drift, an immensely underrated movie, closer to the other films and fueled the events of Part 7. Number 2. The Death Star Flaw Rogue One This is the second Star Wars pick on this list, but look, this franchise has spent so much time going back in time and colouring between the lines that it's impossible to account for all of the after-the-fact revelations that it's responsible for. One that pretty much nobody was expecting, though, came in the spin-off movie Rogue One. This was an entire film about how the Rebels got the Death Star plans in a new hope, with the Empire's greatest machine becoming fully operational. While fans expected the characters to meet a grisly end, they did not anticipate that the movie would address one of the biggest questions in the Star Wars canon at that time. That question of course being, why did the original Death Star have such an obvious weak spot that Luke could exploit in the original movie to cleanly put it out of operation? Well it turns out this wasn't an oversight or a goof or a flaw or anything like that, but an intentional failsafe implemented by Mads Mikkelsen's Death Star designer. Number 1. 
Kay has been looking out for Jay his whole life, Men in Black 3. Men in Black 3 had a famously messy production when, in order to take advantage of some tax breaks, it began filming with only the first act of the script written. It suffered numerous delays and rewrites as a result, and despite appearing to be a hit, it cost so much that it barely broke even. Despite the setbacks though, it functions surprisingly well, serving as a sequel and a prequel to the previous movies. It follows Jay travelling back to the 1960s to save his partner Kay's life. Jay is also suspicious of some secrets Kay is keeping from him only to realise during a surprisingly touching ending why his friend was being so coy. It turns out that Jay's father actually helped Kay defeat the movie's villain in the past, and died in the process. The young Jay sees this happen, so Kay comforts him and erases his memory of it. So yeah, that's right, grumpy old Kay was keeping an eye out for Jay his entire life, and it was no accident that they met in the original movie. No, I'm not crying, it's just raining on my face indoors. 